Inspiration lies at the heart of philanthropy. What spurs someone to give significantly and selflessly so that the gift creates an impact throughout the community? It may be an ingrained sense of the need to give back. It may be the memory of hard times in one's own past. It may be the living example of an important role model. Inspiration comes in many forms, but its essence remains the same. The desire to leave a mark on the world by making a difference. Some of the Pikes Peak region's most fascinating cultural legacies owe much to local philanthropists. Two examples are the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo and the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. The rodeo was such a well-loved program within the community. The Shivers Fund Concert Series and the Shivers Collection at Pikes Peak Library District are the vision of Peggy and Clarence Shivers, two lifelong philanthropists. I've been really blessed. This community has been very supportive of everything Clarence and I have done. Another local cultural legacy is the Myron Stratton Home. Refuge and uh, protection and safety. Many local philanthropists started life in humble circumstances. Mr. Arkham was born in 1896. He was one of uh, 12 or 13 kids or something. Anna Kiesling Ackerman was his mother. They came in a covered wagon to Colorado Springs. And he went to school here, grade school, in the Colorado Springs High School, graduated, took some courses at Colorado College. Due to his impoverished childhood, Jasper Ackerman's charitable work often included random acts of kindness. He'd work out a way to not be recognized by slipping $100 to somebody that was looked like they were digging pretty hard with three little kids in a lunch thing, uh, dressed pretty poorly. He'd figure out a way to slip a $100 bill uh, around to the, uh, the waiter would come by and he'd say, I need another glass of tea. I want you to bring me that check and I want, want to take care of it and I don't want you to say one word to them except another gentleman took care of that. Winfield Scott Stratton also knew what hard times felt like. The roots of his life were as a laboring person and he saw a lot of poverty and he saw a lot of people that uh, were not being taken care of. And if you will, uh, I, I think truly he considered those people as his poor, our poor. And uh, philosophically, that led him to uh, provide a home for poor persons. Like Ackerman, Stratton kept watch for situations where he could lend support. He always fancied himself as a carpenter and a prospector before he struck it rich. And so empathy for people who were poor carried through his life. And there are many, many examples of his uh, generosity. One of those was uh, a widow, poor widow, who had a son that had exhibited some talent at music. And uh, she couldn't afford a violin. Well. Stratton bought the violin, paid for the lessons, and paid for education abroad. And that young man became a uh, professor at Juilliard. That child's life uh, never could have been what it was without Stratton's generosity. That's just one of many examples. Peggy Shivers has practiced philanthropy throughout her life, thanks to the example set by her mother. My mother and she never had a whole lot of money, but she was always willing to help wherever she could. Uh, she's a total people person. To this day, she's still alive. She's 93 years old and just as feisty as she can be. And um, I don't know, it's just a part of life for us to give and support and help wherever we can. But she was a beautiful role model for me. And I love her to this day for it. Her mother's actions felt so natural that Peggy didn't really think of her charitable work as philanthropy. It's just a natural thing with me. It's just a, a part of life. When I saw a need, 
then if there was something I could do about it, then I would. Although each of these philanthropists supports many worthy causes, each has one dear to their hearts, which they see as answering essential needs. For Peggy and her husband Clarence Shivers, their passion for African-American cultural contributions aligned with an important need in the Pikes Peak region. Clarence uh, was given a commission to do a wonderful art project for Miller Brewing Company. And this was to be um, a calendar. And the calendar, the subject matter was uh, civil rights leaders. And Clarence was responsible not only for the paintings, but also for the writing. And of course, where would he go but to the library to get uh, to do research? And he came back really frustrated. He just couldn't find the information that he needed in our library. Well, in the back of my mind, I decided then and there that we were going to do something. When Peggy and Clarence first moved to Colorado Springs in 1979, they involved the community in supporting causes related to their interests. In 1993, our um, 25th wedding anniversary, we had this, and it, our anniversary falls near Thanksgiving. So we had a, a big event. We had, of course, an art show. And, oh, we sold lots and lots and lots of artwork. And uh, we took a portion of the money and donated it to the library with specific instructions that we wanted to start an African-American historical and cultural collection. And we wanted this collection to be totally integrated into the materials of the library. Over the years, the fund grew beyond books to a community concert series, which continues today. We did so well on our uh, fundraising and all, and the library can only hold so many books, that we could have stopped and just used the interest on the fund that we had and be able to still continue to contribute to the library. But I brought it to the library's attention that you rarely see African Americans performing classical music. That was my background in our community. And it would be nice to start a concert series. And they agreed and I'm so thankful that they did. The Shivers Fund Concert Series and the Shivers Collection at Pikes Peak Library District are embedded in the fabric of our community. Since her husband Clarence's death in 2007, Peggy says she's been struck by the powerful legacy he's left behind. He was an amazing fellow. I tell you, to this day, I rarely go someplace without someone coming up and talking with me about Clarence, either something he said to them or, or some way that he had encouraged them or something. I said, boy, when I die, I hope I'll have at least half that legacy. But he, he was an amazing individual. Another enduring cultural contribution to the Pikes Peak region is the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo, which has been shaped by numerous local philanthropists, including bankers Jasper Ackerman and Hal Littrell. In 1937, Ackerman helped found the local rodeo, and nearly 20 years later, he brought his employee Hal into the fold. He came to me and said, I want you on the rodeo board as a secretary treasurer. I liked rodeo. Uh, we had two rodeos in Lubbock, and they got me on a bucking horse once as an exhibition rider. I lasted three jumps like to broke my neck when I landed. Though Littrell didn't take on many more bucking broncs, he did serve as the rodeo's treasurer, and later also as chairman for 48 years. Ackerman and Littrell were instrumental in creating the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame and bringing the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association to Colorado Springs. We started talking to them about well, your headquarters with a, with a Pro Rodeo Association and the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame can all be one in one building down here. And, and so we went, got busy and raised some money. There were some four or five, really, that really spent a lot of time, uh, besides us and Ackerman, of, of uh, getting it involved. And, and the community, the city, really was behind, behind it. Also. Not only is the rodeo part of the cultural life in the Pikes Peak region, 
but it also benefits other local nonprofits. As a veteran of both world wars, Ackerman felt passionate about supporting military families, and he was able to arrange for one of his interests to benefit another. Those proceeds were dedicated to go to military charities because he had seen the different kind of things that were there. I really enjoyed going out and talking to the chaplains and the first sergeants and sergeant majors and finding out what is it that you need? What do, things do you really need? Just as the Shivers created a fund for their charitable works, so did Jasper Ackerman, who named his fund the Anna Kiesling Ackerman Fund in memory of his mother. If he was doing something, uh, he never did it to honor himself. He always did it to honor his mother. Fund administrator Hal Littrell ensures that the nonprofits meet Ackerman's interests and live up to his standards. Helpful organizations of all kinds, really, that, that are qualified, that doing wonderful things and, and continuing to do them for people, people's health, people to live, people's jobs, so forth, those things. I, I, I feel very strongly about it because I've developed that from him and watching him saying, you know, uh, we need to help them. I love to go to some of these outfits and see a plaque there, donors, and you look down it, it'll have your name or the, the, these names on there, and, and it's doing well and the people love it. And, and it's just nice to know that, that uh, it's turning out well and it's good for, good for a lot of people. The legacy of the Myron Stratton home is not as much about cultural activities as it is about people, dignity, and compassion. What might this community be without the work of the Stratton Home and the other organizations uh, in our community that uh, are providing for uh, people without means? I think that uh, the Stratton Home is one cog in that big wheel. Uh, we do our job very uh, judiciously and uh, I think we've done our share of good. Just as Hal Littrell has been careful to use the Ackerman Fund in the spirit it was intended, so have the trustees of the Myron Stratton Home. They've facilitated the evolution of the home's activities during the past 100 years to meet the community's needs. We realized that we couldn't be all things to all people, that there were people in the community that carried out the mission of Stratton without knowing it, but that it would be wise uh, to sponsor them on the campus. So we reinvested in the buildings substantially and brought in uh, what is now known as the Stratton Consortium. We sponsored those people in. Uh, the magic in that, of course, is that they pay a, a dollar a year rent for buildings that were multi-million dollar buildings, thus allowing them to apply uh, their energies to their mission, which is also the mission of Stratton. Today, the Myron Stratton Home celebrates a century of sanctuary. The inspiration comes from the endurance of this organization to its mission. And it's uh, the legacy of Stratton and the money that he bequeathed to this organization has allowed it to be enduring and consistent throughout time. The testimony to that would be the 7,000 orphans that went through here. Tremendous, tremendous impact. Every time I come to a function here, whether it's Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner, and sit with some of the residents in the adult program, uh, the joy that they have and the dignity that they are able to carry out basically the end of their lives here at the Stratton Home. The three legacies created by the Shivers Fund, the Anna Kiesling Ackerman Fund, and the Myron Stratton Home fill very different needs in the Pikes Peak region. Born of inspiration, these philanthropists continue to improve lives and invite us to do the same. You need to know that you're doing something positive for the community. I would advise because to find something that you really enjoy something that you really have an interest in, because all of this that we do with the uh, Shivers Fund, it requires a lot, but it's fun to me. 
because I, it's something that I really love and, and want to see happen in our community. It's been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful journey.